I think that there's no straight answer to this question. Um, first of all, the assumption is that every government will do whatever they are already trying to do in terms of uh, controlling data. But at the same time, I think you know uh, what becomes very obvious, uh, contrasting what happened in Asia countries versus uh, in Western country, is that uh, data privacy is a trade-off. Sometimes when you have um, you know, public security and public health is um, at stake. Maybe we all have to give up a little bit of data privacy in order to protect the society. But where do we draw the line? I think, you know, every country and every society is still trying to find out um, what what's a guarantee going to change is that, um, you know, we will all realize that um, so much of uh, producing our phone on our um, devices uh, will become part of our digital health infrastructure going forward. The pandemic will 100% speed up uh, the acceleration of uh, adoption AI automation uh, for a few reasons. Number one is out of necessity. The economy um, globally will suffer, and um, especially for traditional business, uh, business decision makers, they all have to look for reasons and you know, tools to um, improve the efficiency, reduce the cost, and also find new ways to uh, have um, top line growth. One of the low hanging fruits, uh, a foundational technology we can adopt is AI and automation. And, um, and number two, you know, uh, especially in automation, in some aspect, um, it also allow um, you know a certain operation reduce human contact. And um, while we still have to you know have a social distancing, uh, using automation might be a very good solution for certain businesses to uh, protect their employees and also increase efficiency at the same time. Um, number third, you know the the uh, uh, the third is that. Uh, the joke goes, you know, which C-suite has uh, really accelerated digitalization? Is the CEO, CTO, or CFO, or COO? The right answer is uh, COVID-19. Um, you know, while everyone's uh, locked at home, we all have to, you know, be um, you know, rely on, you know, online operation and uh, digitalize our operation. For a lot of organizations who regarded um, you know, using technology, um, digitalize their organization was a very abstract concept before COVID-19. Now they all have to accelerate their um, plans in terms of how they can systema systematically uh, digitalize their organization. There are very few topics are as polarized as China today. And um, I think, you know, you, with this question, you can ask different people who have completely opposite uh, answers. And often, you know, those opposite answers, perhaps, you know, um, both are correct from different angles. However, I think what China needs to do right now is to proactively come up with um, um, uh, you know, vaccine and uh, provide tests for especially developing countries. Um, you know, pandemic happened many, many times in human history, and it could happen in any country in the world. So I care more about which country can really contribute the most to stop the pandemic than you know where you start the pandemic um, and um, and also going forward I think it's very important that we make this a very constructive con uh, conversation regardless your view about China which is we don't know where the next pandemic gonna start right if we start to the entire world scrutinize where the pandemic started the incentive for the next country when they have a you know disease or um, have a pathogen start to just spread, um, the, the incentive will be, you know, cover it up further and, you know, don't, reckon, don't admit um, it's a start from their country. I just don't think that's very constructive um, going forward. So I think 
in terms of uh, China's reputation will be determined by, you know, people who around the world to see the actions coming from China. And I think, you know, there's still in terms of digital health, in terms of um, uh, COVID-19 testing, for example, um, you know, none of the testing is perfect right now, but when it comes to affordable tests, test and scalable and produce very quickly and cheaply, it's still China. So I think China has a lot of um, positive role can play going forward and um, owning, you know, having, um, taking the role, taking the leadership um, in terms of uh, helping the rest of the world, uh, in addition to keep uh, the local domestic situation under control, um, is the only, you know, positive way forward. I think you know the uh, global geopolitical leadership um, is made up um, by many more factors rather than just focus on you know how COVID nineteen is under control. And um, if you take you know uh, perhaps the most successful cities and countries that uh, have come out of this, perhaps South Korea and Hong Kong will stand out. So Hong Kong went through SARS. Um, South Korea went through MERS. So the, term, the, the, the infrastructure and the mindset, the entire society came together. Um, how quickly the entire society came together, you know, other countries just can't compare, right? So I think uh, in terms of the power shift uh, just based on the COVID-19 response is uh, probably too simplistic. Um, I think what's going to happen is to you know, have this uh, collective, you know, society versus individualistic society and how people come together, make individual sacrifice for the greater good for the society will become a very distinctive contrast um, when we look back and compare to, you know, the Asian countries versus uh, Western countries. And um, I think the power shift will, um, you know, one of the more important power shift uh, perhaps indirectly coming from COVID-19 response is that your economic power, right? And if you keep your COVID-19 under control, then the economy is likely to come back quicker and uh, suffer perhaps less. So I think that's actually going to play a much bigger role than just the perception of uh, how quickly, um, you know, we, uh, each country uh, was able to combat COVID-19. Uh, one more quite important lessons out of this is that when COVID-19 came out from, uh, when it started in Wuhan and Hubei, everybody applied political lens to see this uh, outbreak. And um, uh, instead, you know, if the world actually focused on data, right, if you think about China, when Wuhan only had 400 known cases and uh, the government started to lock down 11 million people and start to build 2,000 beds field hospital, it must be some decision maker, um, you know, either some decision maker really understood data, they saw the trajectory, they understand what's coming, or they have uh, listened to people who really truly understood data. And imagine the US and uh, UK and, you know, Italy, Western countries, paid less attention in terms of the political future, but just focus on data. And you can discount as much as you want, you know, if you think the data coming out of China is unreliable, but if you just discount the data, but still focus on the data, and I think, you know, the reaction will be a lot different, right? So I think one of the very important lessons we have to learn from this is um, uh, how do we, you know, how do we eliminate the political future in a very polarized world, but just focus on data and make important decisions like this when you have very limited time? It's going to be something uh, historians and so, you know, social scientists, et cetera, are gonna study for years to come. It's not everything um, out of pandemic is uh, gloom and doom. Uh, in fact, I think there are many new opportunities in the horizon. Apart from acceleration of AI and automation, um, I think what's going to happen is uh, 
the entire world in different countries, especially in countries like China and uh, perhaps in some uh, developing countries where they don't have legacy issues, um, we will see a very fast acceleration in digital health infrastructure. Um, in China, um, out of necessity, um, you know, in this entire, you know, managing this entire uh, pandemic in, within the country, um, there are a lot of um, uh, tech companies, uh, med tech companies, data companies, they came together, came up with a solution that, you know, uh, to achieve efficiency in a very short period of time. So this kind of efficiency um, uh, achieved out of necessity during the pandemic is unlikely to go away. So I actually think the, the world will see um, a very rapidly digitalized uh, public health infrastructure. And this is from individual's point of view, but also from, you know, between the government's point of view. Imagine we have a globally shared decentralized database uh, whenever there is a, you know, pathogen discovered and um, uh, researchers and medical doctors, CDC in different countries, WHO, uh, different government, et cetera, they will have access and they'll be able to see every step of from discovery, identifying, um, analyze, and nobody can um, change the data, I think we'll spend a lot less time debating and arguing with each other about this virus, instead just focus on controlling the problem.